Good morning, Rab Boisai. Ah! The Idu Nishmas Imi Morosi Ruspas Mordechai. So here we are. We're about to leave to the airport. It's early morning in Switzerland for the French Alps. After the taxi is coming in a few minutes. So we have to give a Givaldi Kashir and we're back to Chicago. A few notes. First of all, People were wishing me Mazel Tov on the birth of a grandchild. Now, it was supposed to be a comedic joke. My son came in the middle of Shir. He said, Mazel Tov, Daddy. Mazel Tov. You had a grandchild. To imitate Rav Herschel Schachter. And I go, no, 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 no. Stop. No, we're in the middle of learning Torah. Some people took it seriously. They thought, I really had a grandchild. So you should for the well wishes. Not yet. Because the taxi is coming soon. I'm going to read one email, which I wrote with my own handwriting because I don't have a printer. I received many, many emails yesterday, encouragement and chizuk, because of all the hate mail that came two days ago. Baruch Hashem, I don't think there was anything yesterday. I didn't hear, they didn't show me anything yesterday. Baruch Hashem. Beautiful, somebody wrote me a beautiful long poem, which he's going to give me rishos. He said, I can't read it, but he'll give me rishos to read it if I take out a lot of information that will point to him. But at any rate, I'm just going to read this quick one because I like this one. This is from Keith Reich. Thank you, Ellie, for all you do and for all that your family puts up with. Shh. I've been with you since Broches Daf Beis. Broches Daf Beis. And frankly, would we'll probably not still be with you if you weren't a skier, pilot, scuba diver, and a little bit of a lovable nut. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Givaldig. Enjoy the time with your boys. You and they deserve it. Keith Reich. White Plains, New York. Givaldig. Okay. So that being said, we got to jump right into the sugi. Oh, no, we have a couple sponsors. The spots are for the coil is anonymous in Schus of Hill, Ben Sordino, Rivko, Bas, Fego, the Shibi Zoycho, the Zerisha, Kayomo, all main, the Parasachoidish, friends and family for Fushlema, for Yaakov, Yudu, Ben Gittel, Fushlema, Parasachoidish, Wrestle, Austin, Rosenberg, Shulman, and Tobias families, the Schus for Fushlema, for Rosh Yeshiva, Rabbi Shol, Mayor David, Ben Yuchevet, Drukshlita, Parasachoidish, by the Lak and Lebovic families, Lakewood, New Jersey, because Torah is the best school of Parasachoidish. Chajnison is sponsored by Yoyli, Lili Nishmas Dov, Pinchas Ben Moshe Allah, Shalom, Lili Nishmas Rukhom Achayr, Fruma Bas Dov, Pinchas Allah, Shalom, Lili Nishmas Achil Shraga Ben Avrom, Malevi, Allah, Shalom. Paras Achoydesh, Aaron Freeman, Laschus, Parnos, and Siat Nishmayim, Kedini Natslocha, Trebeli. Happy birthday, Osh Zelig Farkovitz! From uh, Farakway, may today's learning be a schus for him and the entire family, Mami, Tati, and Yisrael Dov. Ephraim Hod, Lili Nishmas, my grandfather, Gabriel Ben Esther, whose yard site is today, Shrilly singer and family, Lili Nishmas, Rabbi Yudai, Leib Ben Rabbi Srol Doi, the Shom Shanav and Aliyah, today's the second yard site. My voice, I here we go. So, yesterday we had in the Mishnah that if a person has two wives, one of them happens to be an erva to his brother. One of them is, let's, let's say, his brother's daughter. So that when he dies, his two wives fault his brother, but one of them can't fall because she's his daughter. Now, what happens if she's not really his wife 100%? It's a Suffolk wife. How's it possible? He threw Kiddushin towards her, and the Aiden will see how many. We don't know if it fell next to him or next to her. Is she Mukudashis, not Mukudashis? Is it his property or her property? Yet when it comes to Gerushin, the mission doesn't use that example. Why not? The mission uses example of a, he gave her a get that doesn't have the time in it, doesn't have Eden. So Rabbi says, because a woman has a chazaka, this woman who's married, together with a tzara, together with an erva, she could go free and clear. When her husband dies, she's not required to do yibum. So she's mutala shok. She has a chazaka. She has a pre-existing status, a chazaka, that she can marry whoever she wants. 
Now you want to take that chazaka away by creating a suffolk. And say, I don't know what happened there. Was there a get? No, that's not going to work. To take away a pre-existing chazaka with your suffolk. Now we're holding the Flamed Aleph, Omid Aleph. Amazing. You know why it's amazing? Because it's 30 daf into Yevamas. 30 daf. I personally don't think that we had unbelievably crazy hard sugis. Yes, we're unfamiliar with the concepts and Ishis Achiv Shalagay Bali Lama and Meis, Noila Yibim, Meis, Noila Yibim, then done, Naftali God Asha. Fine. But at the end of the day, Nishkeferach. Eisvi Abaya. 30 days into Yavamas, it just flies. Before we know it, we're going to be on to easier Mesechtas. Eis v'abai, enough al-abai is olav v'albas achiv. So take a look at the chart. What we have here is, by the way, I don't know how many emails, maybe 10 emails complimenting Shlomi Rosenberg for his unbelievable idea. People are enjoying the sequence, the sequence Charts. So here goes another sequence charts. Obviously, you guys benefit. I can't ski. More time creating these charts. But anyway, not that bad. A few more minutes. Here we have two brothers, two Baldwin brothers, Reuven and Shimon. Reuven is married to two women. Okay? Two women. One is the five town woman, one is Rachel. Now, Rachel happens to be Shimon's daughter, the brother's daughter. So now, if when Reuven dies, they both fall to Shimon, that's the first Mishnah Mesech the Sivamis, that tells us that neither one of them fall Ibo because one of them is an erva, one of them is a daughter. What happened was, step two, a house fell on both of them. Now, unfortunately, we remember very vividly that that's a possibility. Surfside, you have a building that f- collapses and you don't find any survivors. And the question is, who died first? Did Reuven die before his wife, Rachel? And if that's the case, then Rachel and the five town woman fell at that moment that Reuven died, they fell to Shimon, and therefore they're both potter. Five town woman goes out without Chalitza, or perhaps. The ceiling fell down on Rachel first, and then only later on, the rest of the apartment fell on the husband, and she died first. And if she died first, that we had also yesterday, if for one moment she wasn't married at the time, Misa Mapelas, the, the death, that's how the first Mishnah learns, and according to one Shita, both Mishnahis, at the time of death, they weren't married anymore because she died. They weren't co-wives. The five town and Rachel weren't co-wives. No one will ever know. Actually, what exactly happened? So, as you see in this chart, both Rachel and Reuben are sideways. The halacha is that Shimon performs chalitza. If a house fell on top of Reuben, and the daughter of his brother Shimon, when you do his man may shine, and we don't know who died first. So Rasa lets us the let me see MS. There's a suffolk what's going on here. So because there's a suffolk, we say that the five towner requires Khalitza, she doesn't go out without anything. Ask the Gibara Amai. According to you, Rabbi, for yesterday, we should say the same thing. When they were both married, the five town and the tsara, she told her tsara, hey, if our husband ever dies, I don't need Yibam, I don't need Chalitza. Why? Because I'm your co-wife. And since you are Shimon's daughter, I'll never have Chalitza. She goes with that Chazaka. You want to remove her away from that Chazaka because you have a Suffolk what happened to the house? Who died first? Um, asra, and that's why she requires Chalitza. Alta Asra and Misafik. Don't do it. According to Rabba, she doesn't require Chalitza. And when you say, you know what? She doesn't really need Chalitza. You're 100% right. She doesn't need Chalitza. She had a Chazaka. She had a pre-existing status that she was mutter to marry anybody she wanted. 
So the Chazak is not going to come and ruin that. However, I'm just going to say, Du Chalitza be Machmer. But the problem is, that's only going to lead to problems, Shemata Oimer Chilet says, because if people see that she requires Chalitza, so some unlearned Yavam will say, hey, you know, I have a beautiful idea. Instead of giving her Chalitza, let me marry her. <laughs> and that's 100% the Asr, because she is Ishes Ach, Shalit. If she doesn't require Yibam, it's Isa Dar Aisa. Says the Gemara, I'll tell you why. Two tunes. First, there it says, Gerushin the Shrike goes over Rabbana. Because Gerushin is so common, so Rabbana said, there's no Chalitza. Why? Because, like we just said, because if you do Chalitza, it might come to do something wrong, like Yibam. Something that's so uncommon, not just uncommon, but uncommon that a house falls, uncommon that an uncle and his niece were married and they both were in the Mapoilus. So for that, Chacham don't do Xeris that are not common. Inami, Gerushin, the Kaima, everybody called Mochach. When we're talking about Gerushin, so the Tzara, the Erva is there, the Tzara, so Chalitza. So we have a situation that you say that the five towner requires chalitza amri komer beira bonam begita the gita maliu. So people are going to say, what's going on here? Why does the five towner need chalitza? I thought she's married with a co-wife to the daughter of Shimon. Oh, you know why she needs chalitza? Because chachamim realized that she's not really. They looked into it. They you thought that the get fell. Closer to him, closer to you. No, I'm telling you, you fell closer to her. She's 100% divorced. Or not in that suffix, but whatever the suffix is, Chachamim are going to, as a bystander, you see that this Chalitza, so you assume that Chachamim did their homework and they decided there's a good get. And therefore, that's going to bring a big problem. When people start doing lambdas and they say, hey, why is she doing chalitza? There's a suffolk here. No, the chacham determined that it's not a suffolk. So people will come to do yibum. But when it comes to surfside, everybody knows the chachamim don't have the ability to determine who died first. There's still a suffolk and the suffolk remains. Now Rashi says a beautiful Lashon. Look at Rashi for a second. Avo Mapoilus. Inami Matzuch Lachalitza Miyasa Lemei Makom Ber Abanam Ber Mapoilus. Is it possible that so? Ela Dayanim Amatzvichim Moisa Chalitza. These Dayanim that say that she needs Chalitza. Neviim Heim. Does anybody think that they're Neviim? Viyadu Shi Macha Shi Shi Meisur Rishayno. Okay. Everybody knows that they're not Neviim and they didn't say Benevo. Maybe they are Neviim, but that's not what they determined. They didn't determine through Nevo. Vigavi Gerishin asked the Gemara, Vigavi Gerishin, Milik, nah, and didn't we learn in the Mishnah? What's not? Hoi, so you met as Now, this exact question that we asked yesterday and that we're talking about today is, in fact, the Mishnah in Gitan. You're asking me, how come our Mishnah doesn't say the same case by Kedushin? You threw a get that's a suffix, whether it fell in the woman's rishus or the man's rishus. Why, did, why does the Mishnah say that? In fact, it's a Mishnah. And he threw her get. If the get fell next to her, she's divorced. If it fell next to him, it's not Migoresh. And if it's exactly in the middle, she's divorced, but she's not divorced. What does that mean? She's divorced, not divorced. Imagine, if a man is a Kain and he divorces his wife, he can never remarry that wife. Even though the Torah says there's a mitzvah to remarry your wife after you divorce her, not a kain. A kain is also to marry a grusha. So this individual who threw a get and it landed, we don't know if it landed in his property or her property, he can never marry her. The ervahi, and let's say this wife is his, da- is his brother's daughter. Tzorasa bay chalitza. That's our Mishnah, right? The tzara requires chalitza. Now, and we don't say, we don't say, oh, she's a co-wife with an erva, and she doesn't require, she does, she does require chalitza. Oh, ask the Gemara, how come 
That mission is not concerned that if you say you, you require chalitza, it says that tsarasa boy chalitza, the tsara, the five towner requires chalitza. Aren't people going to get confused and say, oh, if you need chalitza, then you can do evil? Says Gemara, Yitmar Allah, we already explained, Rabbi Rav Yosef, Amr Tarvayu. The explanation is, Hacha Bishte Kiti Edim Askinon. We're talking about there are two Edim testifying that the get fell next to her, and two Edim testifying the opposite, that it fell next to him. Achazimeres Karev Law. Achazimeres Karev Law. Now, once we have two Edim that say, that the, that the get fell next to her. So she, Midereisa, Lukhara, should be divorced. To come to Aiden and say the opposite. But once they said that it fell next to her, they remove the Chazaka. And therefore, once there's no Chazaka, so she requires Chalitza. So this is considered a suffix midai so the Gemara is going to go into it. Suffix the raisa, suffix the raisa. We consider it suffix the raisa. So what's the difference? But by ah, so must listen to hacha be kas achas. According to Rashi, very interesting. Kas achas means you would, just the simple wording when I read it, I thought it meant a set of edim kas achas, one set of edim. Testifying that it fell maybe in the middle. No. Rashi says it means you take two Aiden and you split them. One goes to say that the get fell next to her, the other says the get ne- fell next to him. The Havale is the Rabbana, and that's only a the Rabbana. And therefore, she requires Khalitza. Why are you saying that our mission is talking about one cat, only one aid for each? Each opinion. So the Gemara do me the Kiddushin. Because it must be, it must go together with Kiddushin. Tawad, ma Kiddushin b'kas achas, av Gerushin b'kas achas. The mission has to flow. We're talking about Kiddushin in the beginning, then we're talking about Gerushin. So just like Kiddushin, we're talking about one aid says this way, one aid says the other way, so too in Gerushin. The Kiddushin kufayu memayit b'kas achas. And who forced you to say that that's the case by Kiddushin? Dibu mishtei kitayim. So, says the Gemara like this. Very interesting, but the, that's what the Gemara understands right now. If you have two Adam that say that she's married, that the Tsara is married and that she's a co-wife. The Erva is a co-wife with the five towns, Rachel and the five towns are co-wives. And you have two Adam that say that she's not a co-wife. Says the Gemara by Kedushin, one, two of them say, we saw the Kedushin, she got the Kedushin, and therefore she's a co The other two of them say, she didn't get the Kedushin, she's not a co So at the end of the day, there's a Chazaka. She has, the, the five-towner has a Chazaka that she's a mutter, liyibo. So let her have Yibo. It's two against two, and you have the Chazaka. It's let it be Messiah. Ask the Gemara, incredible. Kaim ha'edim ka amri karev la. But there are edim that say that she did receive Kiddusha. But the amri s'siyav ma'edim ka klum. How could you go against the edim? How does the, all of a sudden now, Chazaka means something? Before we said, when there's two against two, the Chazaka doesn't mean anything. All of a sudden, now we're going to listen to the Chazaka. We have two edim that say, specifically, we saw that this woman is married, she's a co-wife. So Rachel, the daughter of Shimon, is a co-wife with the five-towner, and you're telling me that Shimon should do Yibam to the five-towner? Even though his own daughter, according to two Adim, are, are saying that she's a co-wife? How could that pass it? How could, it be, how could you even have such a happen? Now, we said a second ago that when you have two Adim against two Adim, two against two, it's a suffix da'iraisa. Ask the Gemara, Mechitais is a Savik the Raisa, Vesu, Vishteki te edim nami, Sveki the Rabbani. When you have two against two, it's only Savik the Rabbani, not the Raisa. Da Amrinon, Uki Tre, Labadi Tre. You take two against two, 
I said this once a long time ago. I have a, a very, very hush of a grandfather, a very famous grandfather. Remarche Savitsky, Zechitalik Lebracha. He was Mechaber 12 Svarim at least. Very, very big time Chachem. He, he used to write to the Rugged Shover when he was 18 years old. The Rugged Shover wrote back and the, he respected him. In other words, instead of like laughing at him as, a, as he would commonly not laugh, but he would be very, very harsh on people. He wrote to him. Anyway, so my Zayda, Zechron Levracha, asked me when I was 11 years old, I was learning in a, in a high school in Eretz Yisrael in Tivrach. That's a different story, why I was there. But he asked me, what's the halacha when it comes to trey trey? So I told him, trey trey kimandalesa. Two against two, is, they just cancel each other out. So he said, no, it's ukma cheskasa. It's like, no. I started fighting with him. I said, my Rebbe said it's, it's, it's Kimandalesa. He's, <laughs> no, it's okay. Okay. So anyway, I'll never forget that one. So, says the Gemara. Um, now, if you have two against two, uh, it seems like from the Gemara that he was right. I'm sure he was right. He was a lot smarter and he still is a lot smarter than I will ever be. But I, don't, I never really figured that one out. But it seems like over here he's probably correct. Now what? We might have both been correct. It's you cancel them out, and then what? So the next step is look at my chaskasa. Again, you can't even trust what I heard or thought I heard when I was 11 years old. That's a different story. Says Gemara, you do two against two. Viisha ukma chazaka. So what do you have at the end of the day? After you remove the, the two Adam, so you have a, a woman who was available to Yibam. The five towner was available to Yibam. Now you want to introduce a co-wife. Well, we don't know if she's a co-wife because we have two against two. Two against two cancel each other out. But that's a derabonum. So the Gemara brings a case of Barshatya here. Barshatya is a guy that eat him chalim, eat him shaita. Once in a while he's sane, and then once in a while he's insane. We don't know if he's normal or not normal. So what happened? The Barshatya Zov and he sold real estate. Asu Not fair. You tricked him, you fooled him, you got a great price. You know why? Because you, pr- you purchased the property from him. When he wasn't 100%, you know, I'll tell you real quick, my son, even though I have to go to the taxi, um, it's good. Wow. It's, okay. I can't say what's going on. Okay. It's in the middle of learning. I'd love to stop and say, oh, Elon, look how beautiful this Elon is, but I'm looking at the Alps. It's just incredible with the, with the, you know what? I have to show you for a second, maybe. I don't know if you can see. The clouds are coming in. Whatever. Okay. Now that I did that, let's see if I can position it normal. Okay. Anyways, real quickly, I was, I had a bunch of, I still own this property in uh, Decatur, Illinois, it's called. So uh, many years ago, I was trying to buy up some, it's a property with a bunch of buildings. And for some reason, once upon a time, somebody, one of the owners sold off like three buildings in the middle of a property of, let's say, 15 buildings. He sold off three. So I inherited that situation and I have three buildings that I wasn't in control. And there's a lot of drugs. Da, da, da. So I was in the process of buying up those three buildings just so I have control. Baruch Hashem, today I own all those buildings. So, so I go to one of the, um, to the owners. And he says, I want $40,000 per apartment. Okay, this is like 10 years ago. And those were the prices back then in Decatur, Illinois. So then I meet another owner. Identical buildings. They're all built by the same contractor. And I have a whole long shoes with him, but he took good care of his building, put new windows in it, new roof, the whole thing. And he tells me, New, you want to buy my property? I said, yeah. He says, how much do you want to pay me? So I learned one of the big, you say this in sales. You don't say the first, you don't, you don't name the price. You never know. Let him say the price. 
So hey, what do you want? So he says, listen, I, I bought this property 10 years ago and I paid $20,000 an apartment. But I know, he tells me, I know, I understand that the value goes down. It can't be that it goes up. It's like a car. The value goes down. He starts explaining to me real estate. And I don't have any more tax benefits. So I realize that my property, instead of being worth $20,000 an apartment, it's worth $16,000 an apartment. You want to you want, you want pay me $16,000 an apartment? So I thought real quickly, and I was like, should I be a chazer and knock him down even more? That's impossible. It's crazy. So I told him, you know, I'll give you the $16,000 on condition that we could close within two weeks. Because I was worried that he's going to go to his kids and tell them the crazy that he's selling an apartment for $16,000 an apartment when everybody else is selling for forty. dollars He sold it for $16,000 an apartment. So it's very well possible that they, the kids will come and tell me, Barshatya, he was a, he was a shaita. He was a shaita when he told me that. We want our money back. We want the property back. Vos we trade, His mom should tipish. For Rav Ashi, he says, Rav Ashi, who can trade how they trade? So you know what we do? We take the two Aiden that say that the guy was sane. And the two Aiden that say that was insane. That he was completely mishuga. The arrow, ukma becheskes barshatya. And the property goes back to Barshatya. We went to, we turned to the Lamed Aleph on Bays, Spencer of Moshe Horn, in honor of Jolly Joe Krause and family, in honor of Ed Kinsbersky, Brian Kinsbersky, Ari Miller, for learning the Dav. Hello, Omar Baya. Oh, so now we're going back. What's the question, Rabbi Isai? The question is, why in the Mishnah, when it's trying to describe a case of a Suffolk when it comes to Kedushin, it says, the guy threw the ring and it fell in between the husband and the wife, and we don't know where it fell. Say the same exact case, by get. Why are you telling me a different case? The get doesn't have the time, doesn't have Edom. Says Abaya, Yaget Olav, Reyoy, it's a Pasuk in Yoiv. We're learning from the friend. Yes, the same case that we have by Kedushin is going to go to Gerushin. We have by Gerushin, you have by Kedushin. What's the big deal? We, we thought it was obvious. We didn't want to tell you. All. We were telling you a bunch of different cases. Yes, by get also, you throw the get. It lands. We don't know where it landed. Rava doesn't like this. Let's go back to the Mishnah, Rabbi Yisai. It says twice in the Mishnah. This is the case of Safek Kedushin. And then the Mishnah keeps on going. Safek Gerushin. What's the Safek Kosav, Biksav Yade, etc. Zehu Safek Gerushin. This is the case of Gerushin. So how can you tell me that the Mishnah means all the cases are one. Gerushin, Kedushin. The Mishnah says specifically, this is the case how to do a Safek Kedushin. This is the case how to do Safek Gerushin. Says the Gemara, Elo Marava, I have a different shot, similar to your shot of but not 100%, 50%. Kol Shiyesh B'Kedushin, Yesh B'Gerushin. You're right. Any type of suffix you have by Kedushin, you have by Gerushin. So if you throw the get next to the woman, and we don't know if it's next to the woman, next to the man, that's a suffix Gerushin as well. Yesh B'Gerushin, Mashayim B'Kedushin. But there's one thing that Gerushin has that you can't put by Kedushin. That's why it says Zehu. What is that one thing? As Gemara is going to say in a second, there's three types of bad gitim in the, in the Mishnah. The husband wrote it without Adam. There's Nozman. We're talking about the case of Nozman. Vizahu the Gerushin Lavdafka. So there are two Zehus in the Mishnah. By Kiddushin means Zehu. This is the way to do Safik and not if you don't put the time in the Kiddushin Shtar. That's not, a, that's not a requirement to put the time in a Kiddushin Shtar. So therefore it says Zehu by Kiddushin. But by Gerushin, all the spake is applied to Gerushin. So then why does it say the word Zehu? It says, Rabbi, you know what? It was just the way the Mishnah spoke. Since it said Zehu by Kiddushin, it also said Zehu by Gerushin. It says Gemara, um, And what does it come to exclude? 
The mu'ute zman, the lucky begidushin, is coming to exclude the time that you have to write a time in a get, the date, I mean, but you don't have to write the date by kiddushin. Brand new sugya. Says Gemara, why not? Says Gemara. Um, okay. Now, this is like is why we have Zman at all. Why is there dates? So it goes like this. There's a Takana that when a woman brings Nikhsim Elog, a woman comes in with real estate into a marriage. She comes in with fields and, and, and fruit and all sorts of things. The husband is allowed to eat the Paris. He gets the Paris. He gets all the fruit. Why? Because since the husband, if his wife is captured and is a shvuya and he has to redeem her, they kidnap her, he has to redeem her. So Mela they were sacking that she that he gets all the fruit. But that only starts once, once they're married. And once, listen to this, once he decides to divorce her, decides in his head. Not physically divorce her. Once he decides to divorce her, he doesn't get fruit anymore. He doesn't get the parents. He doesn't get the the the, the produce. Period. The produce of the fields and the orchards. So when it comes to kiddushin, there's no need to write the time, the date, because regardless, as an arusa, he doesn't get any produce. But when it comes to a get. You need to know when he decided to divorce her. At that moment that he decided to divorce her and he went to the cipher to write a get, he no longer gets the produce. So we need to know that. We need to know when that time is so that if he ate, if she says, if she claims that he ate produce when he shouldn't have, we need, we need a time. So, but by Kedushin, that doesn't apply. Oh, this is very interesting. If a person is married to his niece and that niece went and was Mizana, even though he's very upset at her for what she did, but he doesn't want her to die. He doesn't want Bezin to kill her because at the end of the day, it's his blood relative. And he's going to do anything he can to save her life. He especially doesn't want his sister, who's his mother-in-law, because he married his niece, to be upset. Ooh, they killed the daughter. And you were the one, you brother, you're the one that brought her to Bezin and forced the whole thing. So what is he going to do? He's going to erase the time on the get. And Bezna won't know when she was divorced. She's going to say, oh, I got divorced way before I was Mizana. So he's not going to be erased. It's not going to be his man. So Chachamim said you have to put the time in there. So when it comes to Kedushin, the same thing. There should be a date when they were in Kaddish so that people... Like this guy, this this uncle who married his niece, he shouldn't say that there was Kiddushin after the Znos. We should know exactly when the Kiddushin happened, whether or not she was Mizana. Because we know the first mission in Kiddushin that you could be Mikadash a woman in three ways. One of them is with a Shtar. One of them is with money. And there are people that are Mikadash with money so therefore, and with money, when you give a monetary transaction, you give a ring, there's no, there's no place to write. So Rabbanan, they didn't, they're not, they, they weren't masakin that you have to do, you have to write time. What about a slave? Some people buy with money, some people buy with a shtar. We're talking Rabbanan's man, nevertheless, you have to put the date in on the shtar. Because most people do Kiddushin, like we know, with a ring, not with a shtar. And maybe we go with the Raiv. And since the Raiv doesn't write down the Zman, so there's no, there's no reason to write the Zman in a shtar. Because there's no physical way to do it. Where are you going to write the Zman in a Kiddushin? You're going to give it to her? She's going to erase it. And if he gets to hold the shtar, 
Zimn the Basa Khoisi Mukhap Allah Dol he'll erase it to 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 save his his um his white his sister's daughter. And if you say that the Adim should hold on to it, it is here lo listen. Vila is in the Khazim Mikhtava Basim Asim. So where are you gonna put the star? You're gonna put the star by the witnesses. You can't do that. Because if the witnesses remember, let them come and testify. If they don't remember, then they'll look at the star. You know how like sometimes you look at a picture when you're like three years old and you think you remember that situation because you looked at the picture and it was like, oh yeah, yeah, They then are going to look at the star and say, yeah, yeah, I remember it. But it's not from their memory, it's from looking at the star. So that's by Kiddushin. So say the same thing by Gershon. Where, where are you going to put the get? You put it by her, she'll erase. You put it by him, he'll, he'll cover for her. You put it by the Edim, Mimon of Shach. So Gemara, Hasan Latzal Adi Dakasi. So listen to this. Since we establish, Chacham made a Takana, they have to put his man in a get. Now if they see that the, the time, the, the date is erased, and their aid did not say that she was Mizana, they're going to kill her. Why? Even though there's no date. And she's claiming that she was Mizana after she got the, the divorce. We still kill her. Why? Because she has a Chazaka that she was a Ish. She has a pre existing status. She was a Ish. And this star is missing the date that we established. You have to put in there. The middle of the day would kill her. However, Hacha Lechoi Dakasi. Says the Heilige Mishnah, the official Mishnah sponsored by the MDY the Hilling Group, where we dive in for Rufuas, Yeshuas, and Shaduchim, for Klai Yisrael, and for our MDY family. Join us at the Hilling.com. Says the Mishnah, I'm just rushing because taxi is coming literally in a few minutes and I have to pack up still. So here we go to the chart. We have three brothers married three. Non-related women, three Nochriyas. We have Bracha, Bat Ayin, and the five town. Of course, I don't know if you notice, but the Rosh Hashiva with the frak is married to the five town woman. Makes a lot of sense. Umeis Echel Mehem. Step two is Ruvain. Go sideways. So now, Bracha becomes a Yavama, she falls Le'ivam to who? To Shimon and to what's Nun? Naftali. And then it goes Shimon. Vasa Maimer. So Shimon goes and is Kaina Bracha with Maimer. He gives her Kesef Kedush and gives her money. How much is Bracha related to Shimon? A little bit. The maze, the next step is Shimon goes sideways. So now let's look at it. Bracha falls, Lihibam now to who? To Naftali. But who did she come from? Did she come from Shimon who just died? And Shimon was Kaina her Bemaimer? Or did she come from Ruvain who died initially? And she was always a Yivama to Naftali. And therefore, since we have no idea, Everybody requires but ayin and bracha require chalitza. Why? If one brother dies, Reuven dies, okay, then you could do yibum. But if two, then there's no yibum. Why? Look what's happening here. Right now, this bracha woman is coming to Naftali from two places. She initially fell to Naftali because Reuven died. But now that Shimon gave her Mimer, Mimer is kind of slightly, a little bit. So now she falls in number two over here, the little bracha. She was somewhat connected to Shimon, and now she falls again to Naftali. So Naftali is binyabim her from two sources. That's illegal because it says, one dies. 
Reb Shimon Oimer, however, Reb Shimon says, Miyabim lezish yirtzo, it's not true. Since Maimer, says Reb Shimon, and we learned this earlier, Reb Shimon is of the opinion either Maimer works 100% or works zero. It doesn't work 50-50 like we just described. Therefore, if Maimer works 100%, then she's 100% Shimon's wife. And when Shimon dies, then she falls to Naftali 100% from one Yavam because Shimon was kinder 100%. But if Maimer doesn't work at all, then she fell from Ruvein. Shimon had no connection to her. Emma Min Shach. Either way you look at it, Naftali could be Miyabimer. And therefore, Miyabimer, Lezashir, Tzavachaylas, Lashniyah, have a wonderful day.